we got uh, bases loaded. Andy Pettit is pitching in, in Toronto. Bases loaded, no out. I think it was the seven of the eight. And then we get one out, winning two to one. And then next, the next one was a strikeout. And I celebrate. You remember that I used to ah! <laughs> throw the ball back. Next hitter, double. Next day, he grabbed me. Come here, kid. Let's talk, let's talk about this. You never celebrate the second out. Never. <laughs> never. rolling with mountain visit 45 episode number 45 it's kind of hard to uh it's hard to imagine that we've been doing this for 45 weeks now it time flies when you're having a ball we're we're consistent man that's right uh, (laughs) we're not the number one new york times bestseller or number one podcast yet but you know everybody's got a podcast these days everybody likes talking that's right Um, talking about stuff that's relevant. We hope that our listeners and our continued listeners, maybe you're a new subscriber, haven't tuned in, don't even know what Mound Visit's about. You know, we're just here jamming. Uh, but all topics, is there, nothing's off limit. You see, to me, a Mound Visit, right? Sometimes it wasn't about, hey, man, make the pitch. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. about making the pitch, but sometimes it was about getting loose out there so you can relax to do to do your thing. You know, none yeah. of us, none of us, none of us work well under the wrong kind of pressure. There is a right kind of pressure. And sometimes we thrive on that pressure because I feel like all athletes, and you were one of them as well. I appreciate that. Not, Thank you. <laughs> well, hell, man. You know, you played. It's That's not that, – I think you're a badass. In my opinion, people go, oh, you don't play Division One baseball or, you know, these levels in comparison. If you play and you get to keep that uniform on past high school, you're a badass, dude. Wow. On some level, you have a, you're a badass. Let's go. Made I mean, my week right there. Hell yeah. There. I love, love it. it. I mean, I know, listen, I want to be a Hall of Famer, but I didn't get there. I tried. I wasn't just consistently good enough. But we are consistently good on Mount Visit. And like I said, we talk right. about all kinds of things. We are vulnerable. I hope that we can get other listeners to maybe pipe in at some point when we get this thing really jamming off the ground. Um you know, I talked to Jacques Jones and Latroy Hawkins. They just came up with a with a podcast. So everybody's trying to stick in the game, around the game, talk about the game. You know, give it a perspective. Hopefully, you like ours, and um, you know, you have fun. We try to have fun on here. We even have kind of star star studded guests like Guy Fieri. That's right. You know, Food Network guy. I mean, who has that on the show? You know, right? But we'll, we'll mix it in. So I take pages out of my buddy. I, like I said, I used to ask rookies how to hold the curveball if they had a better one than me or whatever. Get a tip. Sean Casey, good friend of mine. He's doing doing a great podcast as well, the mayor's office. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of my best friends here in Pittsburgh. Luckily, one of my teammates actually lives near me, so I can see him every now and again. Um, but, yeah, the guy's had a great career, and I was running a good podcast. So we're taking some, some advice from our friends and trying to replicate that. But, uh Case, what a great day, man! Um, yeah, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Happy, I don't hope I don't have a Valentine's, and uh, I think Whitney Houston said it best. We should cue Whitney in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say, <laughs> right? Of course. Learn to love yourself first. It's the best kind of love, That's right? That's you gotta right. have, and we should have a mental coach on today to talk about loving yourself. But it's true if you're comfortable in your own skin. If you don't like it, you can change, you know? Yeah. I don't know. If it's it's ball, and I won't even attempt to sing it like Whitney. <laughs> I, I think the people would simultaneously love to hear that and also hate to hear that at the same time. Yeah. So that would be, uh, we would love that. But no, it is. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Go ahead. Do some karaoke early this morning. Case, <laughs> okay, so I'm making you laugh good today, buddy. Yeah, you got good me good a couple times. Yeah. I, if I was your catcher, you'd be throwing some good, good ass paint and corners. Be like, 
I don't know what happened out there. You just you weren't thinking, dude. Don't think. Crash <laughs> David, don't think, just throw. Yeah, I'm breathing out of my eyelids a little bit here today. So Good. no, that's, no, I that's know. Yeah, everything you said. The best part about a mound visit is uh it it goes Still wherever that. that's right. It goes wherever wherever the wind blows it. So and, and that's that's especially what we're doing this morning. Um and we've got a special guest joining us soon here, um, who I'm very excited to meet. I've watched him uh playing ball throughout my entire life um world series champ francisco cervelli who might just be the most interesting person in the world when i've been uh in, in the the little More bit of than research that i've East done I, seriously because i'm yeah. you know cervelli you think italian but then francisco it's like okay well what do we got going on there doing a little research born in argentina but he played with venezuela. you on the uh the team or venezuela excuse me um yep. And uh, played with you on the uh, the team uh, Italia uh, for the World Baseball Classic. So he's got it all going on. Um, and I think a lot well, of people it's... forget that Francisco Cervelli was a really, really good hitting catcher. And uh, I, I know people obviously know him for that, uh, you know, on the World Series team with the Yankees, of course. But he was a really good hitting catcher during his time and uh, really excited to, to chop it up with him. Let me tell you, you want energy? That's why I'm trying to bring some of mine. People knew me. I had energy. This guy's got energy, too. Uh, deadly combination, Venezuelan and Italian. I know the ladies liked them everywhere <laughs> they went, especially here in Pittsburgh. That's all I hear is Cervelli and this and that. So three-prong electricity today. If we don't bring it to the mound visit today, I got chills just thinking about uh, this guy used to work so hard. I used to see him do all these drills. I'm like, man, ain't you tired, dude? This guy was never tired. And if he was, you wouldn't know it. You would not know it. He brought so much life and energy, enthusiasm. And uh, I know he was really beloved here, even in Pittsburgh. You show the love here. I got to give it just from my, my, my experience, too, is you go out there and you just give it your all. These people will be behind you when even when you're struggling. It's a cool town for that. So, you know, San Francisco, wherever you are, whenever you come on, we're waiting for him must be on the latin time or italian time i don't know we'll be right back to this week's episode of mound visit but before we do that we want to let you know that another stop has been added to the stadium series tour the top 100 experience is coming to buffalo new york for a two-day showcase event this stop on the tour is an exclusive recruiting event for the 15 to 17 u age groups only the Top 100 Experience is a high-powered, multi-day event in a professional setting that helps you showcase your skills and talents at AAA ballparks. This is your chance to play at a professional stadium, learn from former MLB players, and compete in front of college coaches. Check out the other two stops on the tour as well, PNC Field in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and NBT Bank Stadium in Syracuse, New York. All three of these events have limited space available, so make sure you sign up now. For more information, visit the Top 100 Sports website and click on the Top 100 Experience page or click the link in the description of this video. Now let's get back to the episode. Hey, people say, hey man, you know, pitchers, we get the knock. I go, I think we had the best job, right? Yeah, it's easy. Your job is easy. That's it. That's it's, easy. You know, yeah. Especially yours. You got to get, get three outs and buy. How? That's I don't it. know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, some, and got some slider than buy. That's it. And sometimes some of us make a great career choice at age 11. I don't know, but I was smart. You know, <laughs> I thought about things. I saw what we had to do. You know, I knew I was built for comfort, not speed. And uh, that's it, bro. <laughs> well, well, you know, I always say the only way to make it happen is you have to combine three things, your, your brain, your heart and your cojones. So it is. Some, some days probably you didn't have anything in your arm and you have to pitch with your cojones. There's no brain, there's yes. no nothing, you know? No. And and you just have to hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> until you catch swear her. Thing. Until you catch her. Hey, uh, help me here because I, I don't know what to do. I got well, nothing today. My confidence, that, that's the best. Hey, there's a story I heard. I think it's pretty true. I can't name names, right? We don't do that here. But there was a guy who had a little piece of sandpaper on his finger, and he was dealing, 
in the minor leagues. He was throwing a shutout ball, whatever, throwing a no-hitter, one-hitter, two-hitter. I don't know what it was. He was dominating, cruising through the game. All of a sudden, he was walking around the mound, right? And the catcher's going like, dude, what's going on? You're losing your rhythm. Something wrong? You okay? You hurt? What's going on? He goes, no, I lost my confidence. And the catcher was going, what do you mean you lost your confidence? He goes, I lost my confidence. He was kind of like looking with his eyes. He couldn't point to show everybody. He lost the sandpaper, the Band-Aid, or whatever was on his finger oh. to cut the ball. He goes, I lost my confidence. Oh. Now what are we going to do? <laughs> so there was a hell of a mound visit right there. When you lose your confidence, sometimes your confidence is, uh, can be a, a multitude of things. But uh, I'm sure you've had plenty of those conversations well, on the mound, bro. Well, you know, back then we did a lot of things because we it was not a, a lot of camera, or there was probably two cameras, catch your picture, but not like right now. Right now, it's like HD in your in your eye, and your you know, if there's something dirty there, they, everybody can see it. So it's a lot of things that you cannot do, but you know, especially you remember the sinker ball guys. They they used to do a lot of things with the with the ball. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not talking about sticky stuff, okay? Because it's okay. Good. <laughs> but, but you know you have to figure it out, man. It's 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 a it's a it's a chess game, and, yep. and and sometimes you don't have the tools to to beat the other guy, but you have to figure it out. <laughs> so you mean so you mean that the, some of the guys that had long fingernails, the long fingernails, they weren't guitar players, right? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, but it's it's a. Uh, I don't know what you think. I'm I'm missing the sparring baseball. That it's uh this pitcher and catcher relationship. It, you know, it it made me sick right now when I watch. I don't watch a lot of games, um, but when I see the pitcher calling the game by himself, so the guy who's squatting behind the play is not a catcher anymore. It's a receiver. Mm. It's just just a guy there. I like my my position used to be. A guy who makes your job easier, you know, because the less you think, it's better for you as a pitcher. You don't want to think about anything. You know, you, you have an exception of some guys like that I hear, John Lester, Churcher, they prepare the game so well, they know they know what to do next. One of my best friends, Anibo Sanchez, prepared the game the the way they, they knew but also they need a, a guidance, a guy who you don't have this stuff today. Let me figure out with the other, the plan B and the plan C is not happening anymore. So, so those little tricks uh, that, that we used to have, uh, call time, change the time of the game, <clears throat> disappear. It, it's not a chess anymore. It's a, I don't know how you call it, Tetris? Tetris is like... Tetris, the, yeah. It, well, that. Then, then you... Then you know we need to, we need to remake the movie, but I think it'll be different according to what you're saying. And it is the game's different. We talk about all these things all the time. Bull Durham was about this experienced catcher helping this guy who was overthinking. And you're right, catchers are so valuable to pitchers, and that's why we try to take care of you guys with plenty of vodka or tonics or whiskey, whatever <laughs> you guys need after the all the all the spike curveballs we throw. Uh, but no, it, it'd be interesting to see if they remake the movie if, and, and we do this <laughs> and, and, and Nuke Lelouch is telling Crash Davis, Hey, you don't think back there. Just get back there and put the, put the target up, man. Shut your mouth. I'm going to throw this page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and look, the, the reality is if, if he, when you, when you were 10 years old or 15 years old, 18 years old, you used to hit the ball like crazy. You probably prefer to play outfield, you know, right. but but you didn't hit. You pitch, so it's it's a very it's a very complex job because from TV or from the other position, you say I can get on the mound and throw a hundred. It's easy. As soon as you start stepping that mound and look at how small looks that thing. And especially you facing Barry Bonds, and you're like, now what I throw if I only have fastball here? Where? where? What about if I miss? 
because that's in your mind. It, you know, the devil and the angel right there. It's like, throw the fastball. And the devil is like, what about if I miss? Because if I miss with Barry, he's going to hit it out. So, okay, time out. Call, call my, let me call my guy. Hey, what do you think here? I don't have it. It, it was, the conversation was, was different. It was honest. I, I, I learned from, from monsters. They, they always told me the truth. Like Andy Petty, hey kid, I don't have anything. Figure it out. What? <laughs> Figure out what? I just came up. Figure it out. I don't have anything. So I have to, I have to use my brain. But, Magic, bro. But that, that's, that's, it, it's something that, that is not in the, how smart the guy is behind the play without making noise. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, well, it's it's, it, it's actually a very good it's a good point because and it I think it's a reason why so many former players that are catchers become managers in the major leagues because of I, I mean we talk about it all the time the the catcher is the quarterback of the on the field on the major league baseball field and I think that that goes by the wayside sometimes and people forget about that but I wanted to ask you because you were kind of just just touching on it where how important it is to develop those relationships because you have to know in those moments when your pitcher doesn't have it, when to go out and talk to him and when to, you know, when to leave him alone. But also, you know, it's like, okay, hey, this guy doesn't have this pitch today. I know that I have to call this. What's the process of building that relationship in your experience? And then how do you kind of, how do you go? Does it take time throughout the season to realize that? Or is that something that's, that's developed in spring training. No, it's it's outside the field. It's, oh, okay, bro. Let me tell you, baseball used to be uh, the, the 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 thing that I miss the most is what happened after the game. You know, that yeah. that beer, that beer in the locker room, uh, that conversation about the game to leave all the anger or all the emotions in the locker room and and then be able to go home and be good with, with family because sometimes, you know, they pay our frustration because baseball kills your brain because it's, it's, it's a sport of fair. But how you be as a catcher, you have 13, 13 pitchers, 14, I don't know, 12, and you got guys that go up and down or new people. You gotta build that outside because you need. I need to know personality, man, because because to Jason, it's a it's a guy with fire. I can go and tell him. Uh, can I say bad things here? This is a yeah, free. Yeah, you can say whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Talk free. I can go and put, put my glove here. And say, hey, motherfucker. Let me tell you something. We gotta get bah, 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 and you get fired. You don't. It's not personal. But probably to Casey, I gotta go. Hey, sweetheart. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> because you got, you, you're a little more emotional. It doesn't mean you got you don't have more balls right. you. It's your personality. So how you figure out that is outside the field, drinking beer, talking about where. Th this is the other part. You have a melting pot in in a, in a locker room. You got a guy from Venezuela. You got a guy from California. You got a guy from well, imagine. A guy from Orange County is different than a guy from L.A., okay? So, and then you got Alabama, and then you got New York. So in the United States, it, it, the United States has the most diverse uh, people in the world, okay? Sure. Because it's so big, and everybody has uh, different cultures. But when you, when you get in the locker room, it's so fun to know where are you coming from. I, I need to be... Uh, interest to know what do you like? How's your family? You like horses? You like to hunt? Tell, take me to your if you have different religion than me. Take me to your church. Uh, let me let me enjoy a meal with your with your family, with your wife, with your kids. That's how you can get into the pitcher's head as a catcher, okay? Because you can call a, anything you want. You can be the best receiver. You can be the best hitter as a catcher, they don't care if you hit or not. They don't care. The only thing they care is how you can help them to, 
for that day to make it so easy to get three outs like this. And then you get and open the beer and, you know, that's, that's the thing. And, and also, um, it, it, it's for, for, you know, it's, it's human. You know, baseball is not a job, man. For me, always it's a game. A game that, I, that is in my blood. There's, there's nothing, nothing's going to replace that. That, what, do, do, do you find uh, something with more adrenaline than baseball, Jason, after you retire? No. I'm still trying. I'm still no, trying, but, stop, but I don't stop think it, stop. right. You can't, you can't stop. find it. You have to find a now a quiet moment <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm been, I'm been out of the game. This is going to be my well, third, uh, third year, four year. And, and, and I'm still thinking about where I can find. So I play soccer and I play tennis. My friends invite me to play golf. It's so boring for me. It's boring. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. It's, it's, I smoke four cigars and, and a holes and and I get desperate. I and and then I'm been looking for for a, a adrenaline that it's not gonna happen. It's it's so I have to be looking for something quiet, relaxed. But but it's like this, man. Baseball, baseball's not a job. It's 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 a it's a big game. It's cool. like. What you do Dominican guys it's crazy so so get to know them be open about it and it's gonna help yourself to live in this world you know what I mean no baseball, it, you're it right it teaches you're you right. so much about life you know the game of baseball and that's something that sorry to cut you off but I, I it, that's just that that statement in particular I think it just shows that you know not only because I think it, it it's cool because everything kind of comes full circle. A lot of people talk about it, people who have played the game, and you guys can attest to this better than anybody. But, um, you know, the game of baseball teaches you how to deal with life better than anything else because of the amount of failure that you have to go through to be successful. But at the same time, you have to know a lot about life to be successful in baseball. And I think that that's something that, that you've uh, you've kind of talked about here, especially with that pitcher and catcher relationship so i think it's really it's really interesting to hear that that aspect well you know of it. you know to uh, to your point i feel like especially when i was in the bullpen we were like our own little you know cabana uh, yeah our own little <laughs> army out there we we're on our own little <laughs> island 500 600 feet away from everything that's going on so there could have been stuff going on in the dugout that we didn't know about sometimes weeks later there was a lot of interactions, drama, intensity, and we would always, I always felt we had to figure it out. And then, to your point, you got to know some personalities. I knew the guys, like I said, the little click we had down in the bullpens that I that I played in. I felt like, and I've said this to A.J. Burnett, who I'd love to have on the show too, one of your former teammates as well. But I said, you know, I saw him here in Pittsburgh. I said, A.J., I said, it's great to see you, man. Uh, you know, people think that you, you got 25 guys. It's so intense, and you're doing your job. I go, I wish now I got to know you more as a person instead of just how I knew you as a player, as my teammate. Because there's just sometimes there's all this time, but there's not enough time. Because like I said, you're trying to do this intense job and get the job done and fight for your job so you still have that uniform on. But I love what you say is that you, know, you took heart to that. You know, you cared about your teammates and – that doesn't that does that doesn't always ring true. It's from my experience. I didn't, you know, the, the good teams. You always said you got to do it at a World Series level where you're pouring that champagne, and the the interview is like we had a great group of guys. Why? Because everybody clicked. Yeah. You did enjoy each other. You really cared. That team clicked, and the team chemistry that people don't like to use that word, but there's a thing that happens where you go, this team's together, and the teams that stick together do win. Would you Would you agree with but, me or no? The, the only way. The only w when you see Thank the, you. the last team doing this is is the ones that always did everything together. When when I when that thing happened to me in 2009, those guys, I remember I was probably Brett Gardner, David Robertson, Ramiro Pena, and me, the only rookies. And then you had Teixeira, Aira, Jeter, Cano, Posada, Matsui, Damon. Uh, 
AJ, CC, Monster, Monster, Andy Petty, Mariano Rivera, they, they take care of me. They never make me bring beer to the plane or carry my bag or, or embarrass me in front of all the people. No, they, they, they never let anyone to talk to us in the bad way because they, they knew those guys came here to help us to win because they were winning machines. When you, mm-hmm. when you are a winning machine, you don't care about the noise outside. The only thing you care is win. And, and I don't know how. Some people going to feel bad. Some people going to, I don't know. The only thing they care is in November 5th or 4th or whatever it is, being throwing champagne in your face. That's the only thing they care. So they, they teach me how to do that, how to take care of your teammates. And they pass, you know. Like, uh, you remember those, those times where you were being, uh, as a rookie, being in a restaurant with, with your girlfriend, with your mom, whatever, and a veteran guy was in the other corner, and as soon as you, you asked for the check, it was already paid. They yep. never, they, they, they teach you that as soon as you grow, you have to do the same thing for the rookie. Those, those kind of things yep. disappear. Disappear because, of it. and, 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 you know, if we say this generation is crazy, no, they have a lot of distraction, man. The, the phone, can you imagine us with Instagram and, and probably no. with the same, with the same. But it's a lot of distractions. They don't, they don't go out anymore. They don't, they don't enjoy a meal, you know, after the game. Uh, let's go here, let's go there. Let's, let's, let's talk about what happened today. It's not happening. It, it, since uh, the game is over, Five minutes after the game is over, it, you see guys walking out already, and, yeah. and and it's a different time. I'm not I'm not judging that. I'm, I'm nobody to do that. I play in a different time, but but let me tell you, things that uh, old school, some things in, in in an old school way really work, especially for your mind. Is let's have a conversation about what happened today in the field, so that way you can go home and be fresh with the person that you share your bed, you know? Because yes. it's, it's very uncomfortable. You know that. It's uncomfortable, man, for them, for your well, I family. Think, I, think, I think that these players do crave that, you know, and, and it's not a fault of theirs, like you said. I mean, how do you say uh, this phone's in the, in the way now, uh, but it's like if you took the phone away, you know, what, what do they do? You know, we can't we can't necessarily blame... Hey, you spilled this, you spilled, you ran into me and this water spilled out, right? Well, if you put tea in it, it spilled out. The consistency is that whatever's in the cup, whatever's in the cup is what you have to deal with. And, and, and what, what spills out sometimes is what needs to come out. And what you're saying is, I think that these players today would want that. I think that that is something we're very blessed because we can speak about that and the difference is, I don't know. I know towards the end of my career, and you played long after me, the culture changed where guys had the video games and stuff, and that helped. Maybe that helped them. If we did that back in the day, oh, my God, that would be smacked out of our hands or whatever. Like, oh. what are you doing? Right? It would because that was the culture then. The culture now is it's part of it, and, and it's it's there. But I think that's why maybe people talk about, and I can't, say that it's the reason because I'm not there. But the mental health stuff, people want to talk. But again, you can go right on the bus or go in your little locker, go hide in your room and stay to yourself. Whereas back when it was like, like you said, hey, let's go out. Let's go talk about it somewhere. Let's connect. Let's try to forget about it because tomorrow we got we to gotta do this again. You yeah. know what I mean? So we had to figure out other ways other than <laughs> the worst game of my life. I gave up four home runs. When I was with the Blue Jays to the Yankees, it was embarrassing. In one inning, I tied a record. I wish I gave up one more because I would own the freaking record. <laughs> I mean, John Smoltz, Randy Johnson, Justin Verlander. There's a lot of guys. Grinky, these Cy Young Award winners, and, and me, Jason Grilly. But I sweat. I wish somebody came to my rescue, took me out to dinner. I was rolling on my pillow. It was soaking wet, brother. So to your point, like, good times, bad times, when you spray that champagne – those moments are, are essential, you know. Do you remember one something specifically that you can share? You don't have to tell names, but something like you had a moment in the back where a, a grown man, you're, 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 you're holding your brother like, let's go, dude, because 
it's intense. And sometimes off the field stuff carries on. And then on the field, you bond because you're like, man, we're doing something amazing. And you forget about one or the other, the balance, you know? Well, it, 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 I remember, uh, let me tell you two things. You, you talk about Angie Burnett, two different personalities, two different. When he pitched, he was the meanest guy in the world. All the tattoos and outside, <laughs> it's a puppy. So one of the He's greatest nice men that I ever met. I ever met. It's, it's, it's kind. It's a, it's a good father, good husband. It's, it's a good teammate. He takes care of the He's in Pittsburgh, he used to take care of the rookies like no, no one. Uh, invited to his house, always his dinner, this, this, and that. But, but one of the things that I, that I never forget was with Mariano. I remember uh, he, he gave up, I think it was Ben Soris when he was in uh, Tampa Bay. Double, whatever, walk off, we lost the game. And I went to Mo and I said, hey, Mo, I think your hip, your front hip, we're open a little bit. And he starts screaming, why you don't tell me that You think I'm perfect? I'm human. So as you see something, you got to come here and let me know. And I'm, <laughs> in my, I, was, I was, what, two months in big league? What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> what happened here? And then, and then those guys with those little things, they, they give me the confidence that I need, you know, because, because I saw it and I didn't do anything. But I, as a rookie, you see Mariano as a alien or something, the, you know, and the other thing that happened, we got uh, bases loaded, Andy Pettit is pitching in, in Toronto. Bases loaded, no out, I think it was the seven of the eight. And then we get one out, winning two to one. And then next, the next one was a strikeout. And I celebrate. You remember that I used to ah! throw the ball back, next hitter, double. Next day, he grabbed me. Come here, kid. Let's talk, let's talk about this. You never celebrate the second out. Never. <laughs> never. And, and, and you know, they, they used to do the, the, the hamburger effect, you know? They give you compliment, the meat is a bad part, and then they finish with compliment. So he started like, you never do this because you celebrate this, and the guy of baseball make you pay, and blah, 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 blah. And then you go to the meat, double meat. But do not lose your energy. I love your enthusiasm. I love the way you call the game, blah, blah, blah. He elevates you a little bit. It's, it's a sport of grown men with egos, different kind of egos. So, so you have to, you know, somebody have to do it. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a men thing, you know? And then... That's a, that's a great point. I, not to cut you off, but you're, you're kind of talking about it already when you mentioned that, that 09 Yankees team. And I, I wanted to ask you because, you know, some of the names that you've dropped already are, just, you know, you talk... Talking Mariano Rivera, Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, Mark Teixeira, Cano, Pettit. Like these are all MVP, All Star, future Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer guys. Some of them unanimous Hall of Famers. And Mariano Rivera, the best at his position to ever play the game, arguably. And you know, when you have all of those stars, and you talk about like it's a you know to be that good, you've got to have an ego. How does that? mesh in a clubhouse to the point where you can all be successful together and then in the end win a world series well the thing is they all they all respect each other they everybody have to do their job nobody gets in the in the middle of anyone you know it, it was baseball back then i think everybody was from 28 to 34 years old you know at that age so it was it was grown man already with five rings with four rings with three, I don't know. But but they they all knew what they have to do. Now the job was for the new guys. How you take care of each guy. So for example, Derek used to take care of Miro Peña. That was his guy. Come here, kid, come here. Stay with me here. Catch your do everything. So 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 that ego 
you know, that confidence. Because ego and confidence, they, they work, you know, and they, they do the same role. Sometimes when the ego goes more than the confidence, eh, you have to pay. But Posada, Posada was one of my, my masters, and he was hard with me. He was, he, you know, he was, he, he made me earn it. But also he protect me, you know, he, he was jealous about his position. And I really liked that because he never told me, but the message was, you want to be here, come and take it because I work harder than you and it's impossible for you to take it. And then I start seeing the way they used to work. He was, he was a monster in the gym. Um, the other guy was, you know, you take pressure away. I was watching. Uh, videos of me hitting and Eric came to the video room and say this is the last time I see you watching videos of you hitting you, you came here to catch and call games okay we hit for you don't worry about it just get out of here he, he wow. didn't mean that he didn't mean that he just wanted to take pressure off me yeah. because Jorge was hurt Jose Molina was hurt it was only Kevin Cash and Kevin Cash and me. So, what do we do here? I got a rookie that he's worried about. Oh, he's not getting ahead or whatever. No, get out of here. Go there, see the ball, and hit it. And it worked. He he, he worked. So, so besides the uh, how the, the superstars they were, um, because the numbers or Hall of Fame, it was more than that, man. It was. It, they, they were humans who cares about other humans because they want, they want to get to some point from A to B. And it was World Series from game one to an 162 plus day 11 wins in the World Series. Um, they knew how to do it. And, 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 and also they knew because the path, the only way to make it happen is the team has to be like this. You see Washington when they won and that was what, 19? Mm -hmm. That was impressive. They went wild card. When you saw the roster, it was, oh my God. But, but they had the best hitting coach in the world, Kerry Long. Mm -hmm. They had a manager who's young, who understands people. But they also have veterans. Daniel Sanchez, Churcher. They had uh, Howie Kendrick. Strasburg. Strasbourg. They had uh, what's the name of the first baseman? Um, oh, Ryan Zimmerman. Zimmerman. So they have mm -hmm. a bunch of guys that they don't they don't have to make a plan to accomplish something. They, they have to do it. What they have to do is take care of the kids because they want the kids to grow the fastest possible. So I will, I coach in San Diego two years ago, amazing experience. And, and, and I played with a guy who, who's the ace there, is, is Joe Musgrove. The way this guy take care of people, it's impressive. This is a guy uh, who takes people out when you have a pressure, and, uh, you're not doing well, come here, let's go, come to my house, let's get a coffee. Um, you know, it, it, it's fun to see those kind of things because it's not only about him every five days. It's, he he understands that for him to to have success, it depends on and to any five other guys. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and and it's happening in every sport. You know, NBA is younger now in soccer. The other day, AC Milan had a 15-year-old kid. What do you think he knows about this camaraderie and and about what what? Or what is what it? He doesn't know, but the veteran guys, you gotta teach that. Like Jason did it. Come here, kid. Let's go. Uh, we got a wine. Let's, you know, because what 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 men do? We don't see it. It's like tell me about your feelings. We don't do that. You know, it's it's, it's not. And it probably sounds a little macho man, but this is the way we are. It's 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 just. Full a locker room full of testosterone there. Who's <laughs> the biggest macho? A lot of alpha. Yeah. So you're not going to see it and say, tell me about your feelings. Nah, we're going to drink whiskey. And you're going to let it out by yourself. See or no? <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> That's true. Speaking of wine, bro, we got I got to touch upon that. And uh, I don't know if you're being more Venezuelan or more Italian right now. I don't know which one. Sometimes, I don't know which one you go I to. Use, so I use I use some days there, yeah. some days there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know I know the Italian side of you because I want you to speak too about you know being your coach. <laughs> You're spreading some some love that love and and in your experience over in Italy and the things that are going on there and our connection too even long after we played for Team Italia, uh, you know like I said, doing a rock and ball wine experience, brother. We got a good project going on with your name on the bottle. It's, it's pretty fun. So having your own wine is going to be pretty fun once once we go. I don't, we'll talk about that off camera, but had to mention it. Give it a plug. People that don't know about what we're doing, it's coming up big time. Big league wine uh, that we'll be able to share. But tell us what you're doing in Italy and the project, because not only here, this game has become global, right? And I would love for somebody in Italy where soccer is king to be able to come over to the United States, get drafted, and be a big name. Another Joe DiMaggio, another Mike Piazza, legends, right? Or just an everyday player that people know, like, wow, this guy was born in Italy, and having terrible facilities, and that's what we're trying to do is globalize this game and make it good. Because look what happened to Otani. I mean, Japan's way ahead. Uh, we talk about that guy, but that's a perfect example of over the course of time how baseball has become a worldwide sport now. And and I know Latin American countries have the, the prominent domination in, in baseball. But I'm hoping, like I said, all these other countries that are getting introduced to the game and the game's mm -hmm. evolving – Get them guys. Tell me what you're doing with coaching in the schools over there. Well, I, I go there. I try to go every year and help uh, our former manager, Marco Mazzieri, um, uh, Gianni, and all those guys. You know, what I saw was amazing. And, and, you know, they finish the game, and every kid of the team, they go and, and put their, the field ready for tomorrow. You see a guy with, you know – doing this in the, in the dirt, the other guys with the grass, the other guys cleaning this, it's cleaning that. So it comes, it, it comes from the leader. The leader is Marco. But it's not, it's not something that is, this is what you got to do is because I say so. No, he, he got a purpose. It's, it's grow baseball players that are also a good human being. Because whatever you do in the field, you're going to do it at home. It's, you know, they, they, they spend long times and and you know the weather there it's 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 cold sometimes they cannot be outside so the time they that it's uh uh warm and they can play baseball they try to do it a lot the kids love it um but since uh what when we play together we had a lot of italians born in italy um in the team great players guys with with a lot of passion they love baseball there uh, in some cities, they love it. The parents love, it. but it's it, after pandemic and all. You know, there is not a lot of money for baseball. It's been it's been going down. You know, so um, I hope they can. You know, Marco can go be the president of the federation of, of the Italian baseball, so he can do what he likes to do. It's grow human beings. It's it's teach them the love of baseball what it means for, for your life is, uh, or be able to uh, grow those guys to go uh, and play in college in the United States. Yep. Best yep. gift any kid can have, go play college, you know? Yes. Um, if those guys, uh, if those college, they come here and see those 19-year-old, 20-year-old here in Dominican Republic or in Venezuela, they don't have a job because you don't sign... If you don't sign at 16 or 17, you're done, you're out. But if they come and start taking guys at 20 year old, they, you know, they, they've been in poverty. They don't, they, they didn't have anything to eat. So they, they, their body change at 20. They, they take those guys over there. It's, it's going to be a different thing. But what Europe is doing is, it's crazy. Czech Republic, they, the stadiums, they start copying everything from America. So the stadiums are packed. Uh, the music, um, uh, they, they, they want to show people all the things more than culture, the football, or the real football, real football for you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, you know, when you when you see Germany, the the facilities in Germany are incredible. Uh, they, you got Spain. Spain is the champion of Europe uh, last year. So. Uh, so you've been traveling around. You've been you've been doing some international things, uh, spreading the love of the game. I mean, like I said, you you won a World Series in two thousand nine, and that banner's waving high, man. So ride that out. I know uh, we 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 get our boy Casey here with the Mets. He's 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 hanging on 1986. You're at least 2009. You know you get that you get to keep that going for yourself. Hopefully the Yankees can get back in there. It's been a, it's been a little drought for them, but uh, you know spreading that love, man. What you're doing is is incredible. Well, the in uh, the beginning of March, I'm going to Japan from, wow. uh, with with the European team play against the Japanese team. Uh, you know, it's, it's just everything with Marco. Uh, and I told him, oh, you want me to catch bullpen? I catch bullpen. You want me to do it? So I just want to see and help. Because it's it's easy to be standing in the dugout and and, right. and, and with two games, uh, just believe, oh, this guy can do it, this guy cannot. I want to see if my eyes is, is catching and, and being bold. Because I, I think... Uh, you can get more people from Europe to play in the big league, or at least to have a career, man. Um, uh, a plan B is it's being a, in a great college in the United States, play baseball. I mean, if it doesn't happen with baseball, at least you have a degree, and, and, and it's amazing. Well, hey, man, when you're going. Casey and I, will we'll, we'll go too. I, mean, I, I was going to say, <laughs> I'm in. Absolutely. Let's go. Yeah, Francisco, we want to say thank you so much, especially, too, for you for coming on the show this week because, um, you know, not only are does your resume as a baseball player speak for itself, but your passion for the game really, really showed through today, uh, and it does all the time. But I'm really uh, honored to be able to speak with you and talk about this because I think what you're doing to grow the game is, is pretty phenomenal, and especially in this past year where I think with the World Baseball Classic, what we were able to see and how, you know, how how much people really love the sport of baseball if we can do the right thing by it and and you know continue to push the game forward and evolve it and and um, globalize the game like really was talking about too I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good that can come from that and I think you're doing a great job of that so thank you so much for that and for taking the time to come on uh, this oh, week. thank you guys next time is with the wine that's right <laughs> next to you guys and you know, and and one last thing, I think the Caribbean uh, series should be in Miami because what I saw there is insane and also the World Classic, the last probably what quarterfinals or do they have to finish in Miami because the atmosphere in Miami, you know, Latinos is Latinos, it's noise, it's, you guys know, but <laughs> but the way the way those games were, uh, the, 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 the noise, the happiness, it's, it's, I, I think Miami is becoming the capital of baseball because everybody can well, go there, and everybody likes to, to go there. Well, that's my goal is to watch baseball in every country. So let's go, man. I'll, uh, I'll be your wingman again, and we'll do uh, <laughs> another mound visit. The only thing is we won't have to go execute the pitch. We'll just tell them and hope for the best. Hey, guys, <laughs> we think it. you should do this. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And for those who, uh, who, for those who like the show, you could find us on YouTube. If you like to watch, you could find wherever you listen to podcasts. If you just like to listen, and please give the show a subscribe um, and a follow. And we really appreciate you watching. We really appreciate you joining us, Francisco. Thank you so much. Thank you.